What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Going to review West Cork straight from the barrel cast strength whiskey. This is an Irish whiskey. This is the first Irish whiskey that I will be reviewing in a series of Irish whiskeys leading up to and then probably just following St. Patrick's Day. Uh, this one's 62%. Um, got a few people in the chat already. We got Blue Wing C. We got. Brian Page, we got Michael, we got Christopher, and we got Andrew so far. Um, I'm going to pour these out. I got my buddy Paulo with me to help me out with a few things because, as some of you may know, we are doing the Game of Thrones draw tonight for the Game of Thrones whiskeys. So stay tuned for that. One lucky guy or girl will get some Game of Thrones whiskeys tonight. All right, so like I said, this is 62%. I believe this was 53 or $54 at the LCBO. Paul is going to check for me really quick. Um, West Cork Irish Whiskey, for those of you just joining us right now. Um, for a cast strength whiskey at the LCBO, you're looking at minimum 100 bucks, right? Like, do you remember ever there being like Canadian whiskey, Irish whiskey, scotch, bourbon? Of course. Pretty much a hundred bucks minimum, uh, and that's for really young stuff. This is probably really young. It's fifty-five sixty, so fifty-five dollars and sixty cents. It's a steal mm -hmm. for that price. Um, I've only tried it a couple times. On the nose, you can tell it's Irish right away. It's got a nice mango note. I can't tell that this is young, uh, really young on the nose. I did notice that it's a little bit hot on the palate, but it is 62%. So that's part of the reason. I'm going to get back to this in just a second. I just want to say hello to my friends over here. We got Loch Ness just joining us. Louis in the house. Catherine Bono, what's going on? Brian Page, Explore Time. Mark Saliba, how are you? Brian Page gave me the actual cost, so if I was paying attention to the chat, he would, I would have known right away, 55.60. Jay Chung, what's going on, buddy? Santa Cruz is in the house. What's up, brother? Uh, Donner Pass Whiskey is in the house. What else we got? We got Joe Mez, Cobra Jet Joe. What's going on, brother? And, yep, we're good. Brian Page saying uh, rare breed is 65. That's true, actually. Good point. Uh, there's a bunch of American whiskeys that are a decent price as well. So rare breed is one of them, $65. Uh, Knob Creek single barrel, uh, barrel proof is 64, or sorry, 63.15. Um, aren't exactly young, but I know what you mean. Yeah. All right. So he is right. There are a few. Uh, I couldn't really think of too many. But the fact that this was under the $60 mark blew my mind because uh, for a very long time, I've been wanting to buy a couple cast strength whiskeys and marry them in a barrel, something affordable, something cheap that I wouldn't mind putting in a barrel and seeing what happens. Uh, this might be the one. This is actually grain and malt. So it's not just um, malt whiskey. There's grain in there as well. And it's married in bourbon barrels. Okay, so that's the bottle one more time. I'm gonna taste it, then I'll probably add a little bit of water. So there's some heat, but that mango comes through, apricots, peaches, that kind of stuff. All stuff reminiscent of Irish whiskey. This definitely tastes Irish to me. Um, I really like it. I know some people don't, but I actually really like it. I think it's great for 55 bucks. I'm going to add some water though. I got this little fancy Macallan uh, dropper. They actually gave it to me, but it works nicely. The hole right there. And you just... So with a little bit of water, this is more on like the pineapple apricot honey still smells like pretty creamy
Pretty nice. And then on the palate, the water definitely mellows that out as well. Some pineapple notes, definitely tropical fruit driven. I think that's pretty good for 55 bucks. Honestly, I don't have any problems with this at all. Um, I'm assuming that's close to natural color, but it could be added color. It doesn't really say. It says uncut, uh, straight from the cask, uncut Irish whiskey. I'm going to say it's natural color. It might not be, but really that's not a deal breaker for me. 62% at $55, man. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's probably like three, four years old. It doesn't say, but I'm assuming. Yeah, Peter White's having it again right now. And he's saying it's a lot better this time around. He's, he's having it with us. Um, quickly to go through the chat one more time. We got the mash and drum in the house. What's up, brother? Moose 76. How are you? Loch Ness. I think I said hi to you already. Um, yeah, I think I'm, oh, and, uh, Jasper, what's going on, brother? BB Jap. Yeah. So now I think I'm caught up. Jason oh, Jason whiskey wise in the house. Happy birthday, Jason. It was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, brother. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with this considering the price in Canada. Okay, so for for Americans watching right now, $55 doesn't seem like a great deal. In Ontario, that's <laughs> like an awesome deal. Like you can't buy anything for $55. There's like literally very, very little whiskey that you're going to want to buy at $55. There are some gems, of course. I've, I've gone through some gems on my channel before, but $55, really you're not getting that much. So... If anything great. Yeah, this is impressive for me for fifty-five dollars. Whiskey throttle just joined us. What's up, Daniel? Whiskey throttle, how are you? I think I might get another bottle of this, to be honest with you, because at that price, it says it's not gonna be made again, it's limited edition. Uh, limited release anyway and to be honest with you I can't think of something better at 50 even $60 Sipper Social Club excuse me Sipper Social Club in the house what's going on brother thank you for the super chat um, at work doing the sense game barf can't stay just saying hi cheers everyone <laughs> you know what um, Ottawa like this time last year is an absolute tire fire. Uh, so I do feel bad for you for doing that that game tonight, Jeremy. Malton Man Caves asking if that's a long bro. Uh, the Malton Man Caves in the house. He also has a YouTube channel. I haven't seen him too much in the chat these days. He's been super busy. He's like me. He has two kids. It gets crazy. Um, Keith, this is a long bro. I split half. <clears throat> I split half with a buddy. Um, originally I wasn't going to buy this one because it was getting some slack from some of our friends, but I was told recently to just bite the bullet and get it. And I did. And just on the nose, these two have been breathing for a little bit. I poured out half. So this was literally open tonight. I poured out half for my buddy who's splitting the bottle with me. Um, so we're going to try it tonight after I give this a mark, which I'm going to do right after this sip. Okay, so this gets automatic extra marks for me because of the price. I'm going to go with an 85 here. That's an A on the dot uh, in Canadian marking standards and most other countries. Um, good stuff. And for 55 bucks, I really can't think of too much that I would rather buy at that price, in Ontario anyway. Hassle-free, 62%, and I think I'm going to enjoy this whiskey. I really like it. So that's the bottle one more time. I'm going to give that one an 85. I like it. I like it a lot. So on Monday, 
I have a video of the SMWS pastries and sweet treats, Bushmill 15 year old coming out. Uh, that's a simple review, one bottle review. On the next, the following Thursday, I have my boy from the Mash and Drum, Jason, coming on, and we're going to be doing a rundown of the Redbreast Lestau, and I probably butchered the, the way that's pronounced, um, and the Redbreast 15 year old. So that's coming up Thursday. So, um, and then following that, I have two or three other Irish whiskeys that I want to sh show you guys. It's going to be Irish themed March. I think a lot of people are doing that. I don't think it was intentional. Just we all kind of had the same idea at the same time. And it's not by accident, obviously being Christian influenced where a few of us are Christian reviewers anyway. So um, anyway, it'll be for St. Patty's Day. But this is an A, 85. I really like it. And for the price, like I said, you cannot go wrong. Cash strength. Hmm? Cash strength. Mm. Cash strength. I actually really like that, though. I love that fruitiness. I love the pineapple note that I'm getting. I love that like apricot note that I'm getting. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. For those of you that weren't able to see the camera, it's the long row sherry cash strength matured 14 years old it's refill oloroso sherry distilled september 2003 uh bottled july 2018 and the outrun was 9,000 bottles so we will be drinking this last before we move on to this um two things are going to happen i'm going to show you this which paulo and i are going to try this is a 23 year old Glenora Distillery, so that's Glen Breton. For those of you that don't know what the Glenora Distillery is, Glen Breton in Nova Scotia. Um, this is a straight from the barrel, 23 year old, 63.5%, 1996. It's bourbon cask. Um, they gave me this sample. I poured it out into two glasses. Paulo and I are gonna enjoy it. I tried a little bit earlier and it's really, really nice. Um, so we're going to talk about this and i'm going to tell you guys where you can get this straight from the barrel bottled 700 mils there's a i believe there's a smaller option i will tell it to you he emailed me the option um i will do that now so one second there we go yeah so the 750 mil is 300 dollars plus tax for the 23 year old cast strength single cask unchill filtered probably unfiltered and then the 250 mil is $100. So if you just want to try it, all you got to do is call uh, the number and I will give that out in the chat below. Um, actually, I'll give that out vocally as well so that people just listening later on can uh, can do it. But Paul is going to type it in the chat below right now. Um, we're going to taste it. I'm going to tell you what it's all about. And then... Um, I'm going to get to the next thing, which is the Game of Thrones entire collection of samples giveaway. All right. So that's coming up in about five or so minutes. Let's have a look at what's going on in the chat. Blueing C getting into trouble again. Um, DH Sills in the house. I didn't say hi to you yet. What's up, buddy? Right on. Uh, Jason Whiskey Wise is heading to bed. Nice catching your stream. Thank you for coming in, buddy. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> awesome. I'm going to finish off this little bit of the Irish whiskey here. Amazed by like that pineapple. I, I, I want to, I keep saying pineapple. It, it might not be, it might be kind of reminds me of like, there's this Italian um, fruit, like puree. Do you, do you remember what it's called? It's like uh i think like fruta or something like that like it's like a few a fruit pur uh, puree and it's apricot flavor or peach flavor or like those kinds of things that's what i'm getting in here like it's like a fruit like a peach puree or a apricot puree on the nose and a little bit on the palate as well i get the apricot yeah man I don't care if that's three years old. I don't care if that's two years old. It's good. I like it. Steve A is in the house. What's up, buddy? <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, um, P boss, I'm just gonna make a quick correction. He put one eight. I think it's one nine. Was it one nine? Number at the bottom. Oh, oh that's the cell. Oh, okay, so the other number. Sorry, he's right. That's oh, the toll distillery free, toll number. Toll number. The toll free distillery number is what P boss just wrote in there. Um, is there a way to highlight this? I wonder. No, there's no way to highlight that. Um, all right. Anyway, let's get on to the Glenora 23 year old 1996. So what I want to talk about really quickly is what people don't know about Canadian whiskey. And what they don't know is that there's this distillery out in Nova Scotia that's pretty much got all the same conditions as a Scottish distillery. It's a coastal distillery. It's almost as far north as many of the Scottish distilleries. Um, it's sharing similar ocean, all right, just on the other side of the pond, basically. Um, and they have whiskey in there that's up to 30 years old. They have maybe even older. Um, they're the oldest single malt distillery in Canada. They've been around for a long time. They fought to have the name Glenora and to call their whiskeys Glen Breton um, because the owner was Scottish. And in Scotland, they didn't love the idea that Glenora or Glen Breton was going to have a Glen in it because that's a very Scottish thing. Um, but they won. They won the lawsuit and they got to keep the name. And honestly, if I gave this to anybody blind, they would think that this is an excellent well-aged scotch in my opinion and i'd be curious to know what you guys think this one is like i said 63.5 so we're gonna add a drop of water in it but i'm just gonna give you some quick notes here so there's this crazy multi note that i get almost like a porridgey type note honey and porridge It's really nice. Definitely an oak influence, like a heavily charred cask. Or there, I don't think there's any peat in this, but it's heavily charred casks. Yeah, uh, Peter White saying Glen Breton's aged stuff is really expensive, seven fifty uh, Canadian for the twenty-five year old, and he's gonna pass. This one is twenty-three years old, cast strength for three hundred bucks at. Um, 700 mil, uh, 700 milliliters. What did I say for the 250? Was it a hundred bucks? So a hundred bucks for the 200 milliliter and 300 bucks for the 750 milliliter. I'm probably going to buy a bottle of the 750 milliliter based on this tasting here, but I'll give you a couple notes. Crazy viscous. Honestly, you could lie to me and tell me this was scotch and I'd believe you. Kind of has like, um, I don't know. It's good. It's got a really nice bourbon cask influence. I want to almost say Klein Leash, but not quite Klein Leash. It's there though. It's around that like flavor profile. Um, obviously, it's not Klein Leash. Not it's not hot at 63.5%. Um, this is in a warm part of the distillery. So it actually probably loses more water than alcohol by the year. And that's why it's still so high, 23 years old, but it's 63.5%. Yeah, George Kaplan's in the house. What's up, buddy? Eric Waits in the house. How are you? Okay, so while this is opening up, I'm going to add some water in it. But before I do all that, I have a number randomizer right here. I'm going to plug in from 1 to 427 because that's how many comments were on the Game of Thrones video when I did the entire rundown of all the Game of Thrones whiskeys. Um, so the, the giveaway ends today. From 1 to 27, Paul is going to go down the list and tell me exactly who won. 
based on the number that's drawn. So I got minimum one, maximum 427. Um, I'm going to show you guys right now. Number 67. So that's not too bad for Paula to have to scroll through. So he has to go from the bottom um, up to number 67, and we will find out who that is. DH still says 69. He was actually very close. Moose 76 just had it flipped. Hmm. Honestly, I like the nose on this one a lot. Very honey, dirty honey. That's what I'm getting out of that. I gotta get used to like using this thing so I don't add too much water. That's good, I think. Yeah, so the number was 67. I will put it in the chat. 67 is the winner. We will find out who that is in hopefully a couple minutes. It might take a little bit of time. Um, DH still is saying fancy dropper. Is that a Scotch Test Dummies one? This is actually a McAllen one. They sent it to me. So, I mean, I'm not above receiving free stuff. I apologize, but free stuff is nice once in a while. Claire the Third is saying Irish whiskey. Ew. <laughs> I love Irish whiskey, man. Uh, you know what? When I started my whiskey journey, I didn't actually love Irish whiskey. That's become a thing for me in the last year or so. So definitely a charred cask note in here, which is actually really nice. And then some honey, maybe a little bit like maple syrup. Yeah, what was that? Aquavite. Aquavite? <laughs> you, are you serious? <laughs> Double, check, but... Double check. Okay, so apparently the winner is Aquavite. Um, we're going to double check that to make sure, but I'm going to send him some, but I'm going to do a, 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 a second one if that's the case, just because I feel like you guys are going to think that's rigged. DH Silves, yeah, whatever. You can call me a seller all you like, but it's a dropper, man. It's not going to change the way I feel about whiskey. So, um, yeah, it's all good. That's all it is. It's a dropper. So this is really good. Like I said, if you're interested, I like it. I w I'm not gonna give it a mark because I don't mark things based on a sample. I don't feel like it's a fair assessment of the whiskey, um, but I like it. I'll probably buy a bottle. It's 300 bucks. Like I said, if you want, the phone number is up above, 1-800, whatever it is, uh, under P Boss. He's one of the moderators. I don't know if he's highlighted, but we'll probably send it again in a little bit, okay? Amy, what's going on? How are you? Aquavite confirmed. So it's Aquavite for sure, eh? Okay, so I'm gonna do it one more time because I'm I'm gonna send the the uh, samples to Roy, but I'm sure he's gonna feel like it, it it's not the the full effect if he wins. So I'm gonna do it one more time. All right. Uh, so here's the randomizer. It was 67. I need to press that button. There we go. 158. Okay, 158. Um, we will see. I think DH Silves has had one too many tonight. <clears throat> I like this. This gives me hope. When I taste stuff like this, 
It's Canadian. It's made the right way. It's a single malt. It gives me a lot of hope. It, it allows me to see what Canadian whiskey can be like. Hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> he hasn't had any yet. Okay. So 158, let's see what happens. Thanks, Santa Cruz, for writing that in the chat. Um, yeah, heavy shipping fee to Scotland. I have to send him a sample of something else anyway, which I'm sure he would rather, much rather anyway. So uh, we'll see. I'll talk to him about it. Maybe he'll choose, pick and choose the ones that he wants. Um, but 158, whoever you are, we're going to find out in a second. Sorry, Paulo. Kind of tedious work right now. Richie Z is in the house. What's going on? Richie Z might be 158. You never know. We will find out who 158 is. What do you think of this? I don't want to take it. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy that starts yelling out numbers while Paul is counting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we will confirm it, but it, it's going to be there in a second. He will want the Klein Leash. Yeah, he'll probably want the Klein Leash. So maybe I'll send him the Klein Leash. There's a couple of my friends in the chat that might not like the, the idea of sending alcohol in the mail. I apologize to you in advance, but I will, I will pay you with some alcohol as well. <laughs> I can't wait to try that long roll. Looking forward to it. This is really good. 23 years old, 63%, 63.5. Really, really nice. 158. 158. How did you do? I'm just going to confirm backwards and I'll. Yep. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate it. This last straw distillery shirt was given to me by the gentlemen that were here in my last live. A bunch of you guys were in that chat. How many do we got right now? I have no idea how many we have at the moment. Where does it say here? Why don't I see it? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, 45. 45. Cool. Jabronis can't count. I don't have to count you, numbnuts. It's a number that shows on a screen. <laughs> Oh, uh, Daniel. Silent Bob's counting. <laughs> Silent, yeah, I got Silent Bob. I got Silent Bob counting over here. Um. Anyway, forty-six. Thank you, guys. We are going to move on to the long row in a second. We are just going to confirm who is number one fifty-eight. DH Silva is saying, don't disappoint your friends. Just fly it over to Roy personally. I would love to do that. I would absolutely love to do that. Um, the school year goes for another few months, unfortunately. But <laughs> Rudy Poo Jabroni. There's too much of the use of the word Jabroni flying around here. I think that word died in the 90s. We need to move past it. <laughs> Unless Daniel, I think Daniel is using the word jabroni as a, a racial slur against Italians. That's racist, Daniel. You're racist. Uh, Blue Wing C is saying, is that your intern talking in the background? Yes, that is. Not my intern, technically. We'll see. Maybe one day he'll be part of Whiskey in the Six. I do need some help over here, obviously, as you guys can tell. <clears throat> but I think we're going to move on to the long roll Sherry 14 after I take this last sip. One fifty eight, right? Yeah. Okay, so Jarrett Crexy, 
I probably pronounced that wrong, so I'm going to write it in the chat. Jarrett Crick. See, um, send me your information. You are you are the winner of the Game of Thrones samples. So it's really hard to find. So it's good. The client leash is really hard to find. So his comment was. Really hard to find in my neck of the woods. Was hoping to find the Talisker Klein leash, but couldn't. So I will be happy to oblige. I'm happy that you will be able to taste the Klein leash and Talisker, Jarrett. Um, congratulations, Jarrett. I I love doing these giveaways because you give people an opportunity to try something they never get to try. So very cool. And Amy W is saying, let's bring the bomb back. I think Jarrett is gonna think that this uh, live stream is the bomb because he just won some samples. All right, moving on to this bad boy right here. There you go, sir. Cheers. So this is a lot more peated than other long row expressions that I've had. They are known to be the heavily peated one. But man, this like octomore peated almost. I love it. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, so... I have no idea what my friends were talking about when they told me that this wasn't very good. On the nose, it's heavily peated. It's super ashy and smoky and also has this wicked barbecue, like smokehouse type yeah. note. <sighs> Daniel's always got to give me, like bust my chops. Made up name. No, that's not a made up name. I wrote in the chat. Go check 158 yourself, Daniel. Like aged soprasata. Aged okay, so for those of you that don't know that that's like um, cured sausage, basically. It's like yeah, what your salami would be, but a little bit like smoke. smokier, a little bit spicier. Oh, wow. I love this nose. So 57.8%. I'm actually very disappointed in myself for not going with my gut and buying this like four months ago when I had the chance. Damn. Just nose. Okay. Yeah, like just on the nose, we could be here all day. <laughs> Holy smokes. Literally. Yeah, literally. <laughs> exactly. No pun intended, <laughs> but yes, pun intended. Ah, <laughs> the mash and drum just uh, found it for us. So it's abricoce is the Italian apricot puree that I was talking about earlier. Interesting. Very cool. It's too busy to research it. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, man, you would love this stuff. Think like soprasata <laughs> and like so drizzled in like maple syrup. Smokehouse so Soprasata. So like basically like cured meats, honey. Wow, that's awesome. It's not like it's not hard to smell at all. Like you can stick your nose right in this glass. Fifty-seven point eight. Damn, yeah. Color is really nice. That's a refilled cherry cask. It does not look like a refilled cherry cask. So much talk about sausage is making me hungry. <laughs> Keith, I apologize, buddy. You're going to, Keith, have you tried this one? I know you're a huge long roll fan. You'll love this one, buddy. You will absolutely adore this one. I know for a fact you will love that one. Jay Chung is saying Italian cured meats are really are the best. Honestly, Capicolo, Soprasata, they are. I agree, buddy, 100%. Keith is saying he's very jealous because he has not tried this. This is awesome. Keith loves sausage, Clay the Third. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of Pete, did you crack the North Star Heaven Hill yet? I have not, but I have your bottle, Peter, and we will be uh, meeting up tomorrow and I will give that to you. Okay, on the pallet. I can't, man, this smells so good. <laughs> It's shockingly soft on the palate. You do not have to add a drop of water. It's light, but it's like viscous and it's got like this wicked syrupy note. It's smoky, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. It's everything I want a long row red to be, but it's not technically a long row red. I think, honestly, I could be wrong, but I think they intended for this to be a long row red, but then they realized that Sherry is not actually red. So then they changed it to just the 14 year old Sherry cask matured. Could be wrong about that, but oh, that's nice, man. That is nice. I am so disappointed in myself. I am so mad at myself right now. You have no idea because I could have got like two or three of these. Now I have, I'm left with a half a bottle. <laughs> I think that was the intention of my friends to like, Red herring, like deter me the other way. Did sure at the tail end. Okay, so we've talked about this before, but the evolution of a palette. Like, if you gave this to me four years ago, I'd be like, oh my God, that's like an ashtray. It's like a barbecue that's got too much, like, but. Wow. It's not going to overwhelm you smoking on the palate. Okay. No, but I love it though. Like uh, whatever is happening balance, here, yeah. it's not your typical like um, Art Veggie type peat or your Lafroy type peat. It's not like your quarter cask Lafroy type peat. It's super peaty, but it's sweet it's like a – yeah, exactly. It's a sweet smoke. That's a great way of putting it. Um, it's a barbecued smoke. It's a smokehouse smoke. It's You walk into a place where they smoke ribs for out, like days at a time. That's the smell you're getting. This is phenomenal. Man. Wow. <laughs> Peter White saying, may I have to crack a long row red hearing this. Honestly, since I started like buying long row reds, I've tried to collect the long row reds and whatever long row I can get my hands on, other than the no age statement one, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, it's amazing. This is, I think, I um, you could, at the time when it was available, you could buy it for anywhere between 120 and 150. The local barley nine-year-old, the Springbank local barley nine-year-old that everybody goes nuts over. The the local barley for whatever reason is at least 30 bucks more than any long row red minimum, and we're talking like base price. It's usually younger, other than the one 16-year-old that they did. The The local barleys that I've tried, I think I tried a 16-year-old, a 10-year-old, and this recent 9-year-old that just came out. My first pour of the local barley, I was not happy with. My first pour of this, I'm blown away. So save some money, buy this instead, because it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Eric Wade saying, Sherry is made from Palomino grapes. Most are not red. Yeah, exactly. So that's why they didn't call this one a long row red, I think. That's my assumption. But um, I could be wrong. They might not have intended to call it a long row red ever. But when it was rumored to come out, they were saying that the next long row red was going to be a Sherry. And I was like, that is impossible because <laughs> Sherry's not red. <clears throat> Nicholas is saying if you need some, he'll pick up a few extras next week. Nicholas? Yeah. Where does he know? Where, where, where? I Nicholas. Know. I don't know. Put it up in the chat. I love Nicholas. Nicholas, Nicholas knows things that, like, every time I'm, like, about to buy a bottle, Nicholas is like, hey, did you buy this yet? <laughs> I already have six. <laughs> <laughs> I love Nicholas. Good dude. Dram dude just joined. Dram dude, what's going on, buddy?
I love that. I'm not adding a drop of water in that. No, um, no need. 57.8%. This bottle is going to go quick. I hope I have time to do a review. <laughs> I don't know. It's not going to make it out of March. Not a time over. Yeah, this is not making it out of March. Um, so I got to like record a review and then just stash it somewhere because. <laughs> is that long grow a single cask? No, it's um, there's 9,000 bottles. 9,000 bottles of the sherry cask matured 14 year old. Man, I can't believe people told me not to get this. I'm so upset. I'm, <laughs> I'm so rattled. I am so rattled. Go with your gut, guys. That's the moral of the story. Go with your gut. <clears throat> really nice. Wow. For the sake of pleasing the people that like to add water, I will add a drop just to see what happens. Very little. What would you score it? Man, I don't know what I would score this. I, I can't score this off of one dram. But if you twist my arm, <laughs> it's for another. Give another round for it. Yeah, honestly, most of these special uh, spring banks, long rolls, hazel burns, they don't usually go over nine thousand bottles. They usually stick to around nine thousand bottles. Some have like ninety seven hundred. Some have like ten thousand, pushing eleven thousand the most. But they're usually around nine thousand mm -hmm. bottles. <laughs> the bottle will be backwashed by the time you get to review. <laughs> what would you score it, man? Keith, I apologize, man. This is an A plus for sure. I'm gonna just give it a letter grade. I'm gonna say this is an A plus for sure. For now. Uh, but stay tuned because I will review this. I'm gonna record my review probably next week on this just so that I can finish it quicker. Um, but <laughs> man, that's good. That's really good. And you just cracked it. And I just cracked it. It's a neck pour, <laughs> technically. Ah, uh, sorry. The Mash and Drum has dropped a super chat. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it. Um, looking forward to the live stream, buddy. Great mix of whiskeys tonight. Cheers. Thanks for joining, buddy. I really appreciate it. And thanks for the super chat. <laughs> Claire the Third is saying Rob's A plus is like an American C. Uh, my A plus is in the nineties, so I don't know uh, that if, if Americans are achieving a C in the nineties, then you guys are wrong. Not everybody else. Um, but no one can fail in Canada. <laughs> we just mark harder, man. That's it. <clears throat> the letter it's more realistic. The thing is like, if you're getting 80% on something, that's considered a B in the United States. So, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. I think they're just marking easier. Their teachers also get paid like not – I don't even know if it's worth it to be a teacher in the U.S., honestly. It's crazy what they get paid. It's pathetic. It's really sad. I feel bad for them. Non-college 92 plus was an A. 90 is an A in college. Wow. So with water, you lose a little bit of that smoke. It's It opens it up to taste like different types of fruit. Really nice though. Like doesn't matter. You can pour a little bit of water. You can play with it. If you have a whole bottle of this, um, you can do the pour two glasses, put a little bit of water in one, put like drink the other one, cast strength. But both really, really nice. 80 was a C growing up. That's crazy. That blows my mind. How can an 80 be a C? That makes no sense. 
I'm pretty sure the rest of the world considers an 80 and A. I'm almost certain of, of that. Um, I think the, U, the U.S. is the only country that doesn't. I could be wrong, but I think Australia is like pretty weird with their marks as well. I don't know their marking system. Man, that's really good. What could that be coming from? It's gotta be a toy. <laughs> that sure sense of friends. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jay Chung makes a good point. He said, I wonder if this is the perfect meeting point for the dummies. Uh, Pete for Bart, Sherry for Scott. Yeah, this is really good. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't get it. Like, it kind of reminds me of a long row red. It's very similar to a long row red. I don't get a ton of sherry per se, but I do know that there's some sort of like sweet wine influence, right? Um, but the peat and the wine influence, it's such a nice balance. But the water, I find it sweeter on the nose. Yeah, it's a little sweeter on the nose, less smoky on the nose with water. <clears throat> Um, Santa Cruzin is wondering if he can buy the, the last straw webs, um, the last straw t-shirts on the website. No, unfortunately you cannot. That's a distillery exclusive thing, but if you want them, I'll grab it for you and I'll send it over Santa. You can buy their whiskeys and their alcohol at their distillery website, but you can't buy, unfortunately, like their merchandise, like their shirts and that sort of stuff, but they should, I'll, I'll uh, have a chat with them. Maybe they'll put that stuff on. <clears throat> Eric Waite just retracted a message. I wonder what he said. <laughs> yeah, originally he said, do you drink bourbon? Who? Do yeah. I? Of course I drink bourbon. <laughs> David is saying you lie. I don't know who he's talking to, though. Yeah, so uh, the multi band cave is saying 79 was a C plus and 80 was a B minus. So it, there's a 10% difference between Canadian and American marking. For us, a 70 is a B minus, a 69 is a C plus. So then does that mean a, a 50, anywhere in the 50 range is a fail in the US? All it is, like, how often do teachers in Canada give 95 or better? Very, very rarely. So all it is is them bumping up their marking system 10%, us dropping it down 10% just to make kids feel better maybe. I don't know. But at the end of the day, it's all the same stuff. Okay, so – not a fair comparison because this is like super peated and just really, really great whiskey. But all three whiskeys we tried tonight were awesome, I thought. Um, the long row for me would be the winner, but that's just because I love peated whiskey. This 23-year-old Glenn, Bre uh, Glenn, Glenn Breton, really good. If you guys want to uh, try that, Paul, do you mind putting in that number one more time? Um, we'll give you the number one more time, guys. In the chat, you can buy it in 250 mils for 100 bucks, or $300 Canadian is 750 mils. Remember, it's 23 years old. It's 63.5% um, barreled in 1996. So uncut, unfiltered, good stuff. Yeah, that's got a beautiful smokiness to it. Okay, so the distillery is Glen Glenora. The bottles are called Glen Breton, and the phone number is there. Paulo has 
uh, put it into the chat. <clears throat> we had, uh, what was his name again? Jarrett, number 158 win the Game of Thrones sample giveaway. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit more of that kind of stuff, to be honest with you guys, if I can. Jeremy and I are giving away a, a Talisker 8 and a Talisker 18 sample. That will be coming up shortly, so stay tuned for that. We'll probably do that at a live. Um, I'm going live with Jeremy at his house on his channel on Monday. So if you're not subscribed to Jeremy already, it's Sippers Social Club. Subscribe to him. You guys can check us out. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of Buffalo Trace stuff on Monday night. It'll be fun. All right, so check that out. Um, as for my channel, stay tuned because this Monday is going to be an SMWS um, Bushmill 15-year-old pastries and sweet treats that's going to be reviewed. Then on Thursday of next week, the Mash and Drum Jason is going to be on the channel. We're going to do Red Breast La Style and Red Breast 15-year-old rundown style. And then I have a Turcano 16-year-old, a Green Spot Zinfandel cask, and a few other cool things that you guys want to check out this month. So Irish whiskey themed. Um, there may be an interruption if certain crazy whiskeys come my way, but I think uh, that should be all right. I'll record this in advance just in case I get a little too excited with that bottle. But um, you guys know how I feel about it already. <clears throat> Rob, what's your prediction for who ends up on the throne at the end? That's a good question. Claire the third. Nice question. My prediction is this. Um, George R. R. Martin has basically done what some authors call as simply emotional abuse. Um, seasons one through seven have been all your favorite characters either dying or being beaten um, worse. All right, the, something, some items on their body chopped off. <laughs> um, so I think. My personal opinion is John and Danny's baby will essentially be the heir to the throne. Uh, I do feel that John and Khaleesi will probably both die in season eight. That's my opinion. Um, obviously, I don't know. I've never, the books are not even finished yet, so we have no way of knowing. George R.R. Martin's has kept that very close to the vest, um, but that's my opinion. So we'll see. I think it's going to be the dragon chicks. So Peter White says the dragon chicks. So yeah, the dragon chicks son or daughter, actually knowing the show and based on the show, it'll probably be the dragon chicks daughter as well as John's daughter, despite the fact that they're cousins or no, he's her nephew. <laughs> Pretty messed up, but awesome show. Um, <laughs> Eric Wade says my prediction is Frodo Baggins. <laughs> Awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to take off. Um, thank you all for joining. That was fun. Congratulations to Jarrett. Um, send me your information if you've watched this stream or if you tune in later on and find out that you won. Um, send me your information because you have won the Game of Thrones sample set. All right. Uh, Aquavite, I already have your information. I will send you a whole bunch of stuff as well, buddy. Thank you very much, guys. Hope you guys all had a good night. Don't forget to tune in to the Scotch Four Dummies in about 33 minutes. Cheers, everybody.